Good morning, good afternoon. Uh, thank you to everyone that has joined our session today. Uh, my name is Malaku here on behalf of Empower Financing. Uh, just want to take a quick shout out to uh, the staff that has been part of just helping us get set up, Priya and Logan, thank you so much. And but more importantly to you all, I look forward to kind of giving us an overview. Uh, today, I will be speaking with you on funding your education with Empower Financing. Uh, as mentioned, I'm here on behalf of our university relations uh, department. A quick session agenda. Uh, of course, about Empower, for anyone that may or may not be familiar with us, uh, why the students that we support feel that we have been a great resource for them. Uh, some student support, of course, how do we actually support them? Uh, and then, of course, we'll have some uh, good number of questions that I'll be answering for you all today. So as far as our mission, what do we do? Why do we do it? Why do we feel the way we feel? Uh, we essentially are supporting high promise students from around the world, uh, primarily through access of funding. Uh, we do believe that those same high promise students shouldn't have to face any type of restrictions due to a lack of funding. Uh, and so that is what we've set out to do. Uh, a little bit about our company background. We actually were co-founded by two founders that uh, were international students themselves, one of which who, who uh, actually went through this process were ran out of funding. Uh, so that's where we have our inception. Just two of the, some of the common questions that we get asked a lot, uh, either a student has been admitted to a great program, uh, however, they are not able to get the access of funding, primarily because of some type of hurdle, cosign or collateral, uh, something that they won't be able to provide. Uh, on the other hand, you have students that are able to get that funding, but the very process itself takes quite some time, uh, may require bringing in various individuals or family members, uh, in many cases to a physical location, bringing physical documentation. Uh, there's a lot of back and forth. Um, so that's what we've set out to, to solve from the very onset. So from just a bird's eye view, we have a basic eligibility. Uh, we would ask that a student who's going to be applying to any one of our 23 universities uh, that are supported in Canada, we want to make sure that you're pursuing some type of degree program there. Uh, and then secondly, we want to make sure that you'll be within two years of graduation uh, from the date that you are uh, looking to have your funding start. Uh, one quick note to add on the 23 universities are supported. That does not even include, uh, we have a number of those uh, subsequent business schools. Um, so please, of course, check out our link. You'll be able to take a look at the schools that anyone could be able to uh, check out. So the loan program itself, we're unique in that we do not require any type of co-signer, no collateral or credit history. Uh, that's huge. Uh, I think that one thing to keep in mind is how much funding can a student apply for? Uh, so this will be up to $125,000 Canadian. Uh, the term of the loan is sort of, you'll see that 12.5 year number, uh, it's broken up into three sort of sections. You have your 10 year principal loan payment. Uh, you'll have up to two years of in school, going back to the eligibility that students will be making interest only payments for. And then you'll have a six months grace period upon graduation. So two years in school, six months grace period, uh, and then finally your 10 year actual principal uh, term. Uh, with the interest rates, these are fixed throughout their entire lifetime. Of course, has many benefits with those. Uh, of course, students at uh, various stages of this process who are exploring funding, um, we'll touch on like a quick side-by-side -side on why we feel that this is ideal for you. Uh, mm -hmm. Building credit history in you and the Canada, uh, in Canada, excuse me, is another huge statement that we want to sort of harp in on. Um, if you think of the students that reach out to us, uh, they're reaching out to us because of a lack of funding or because they don't have a credit history in the uh, in Canada. And uh, so on-time consistent payments help you do that. Uh, so later on down the line, you'll have a number of credit products available for you. Um, and we want you to make sure you take uh, best advantage of that. Uh, we have a variety of flagship scholarships that we offer. Uh, one note, you don't have to actually take out or apply for a loan in order to access scholarships. Uh, similarly, check out our website. We have some uh, eligibility, basic eligibility criteria, uh, the more the merrier, and it's free money. Who doesn't like that? Uh, as far as the prepayment penalty, there is none. 
So pay off as early as you like. That's one common question we get a lot. Um, so uh, we actually recommend that you'll save some money towards the tail end. So what you're looking at is the standard applicant journey. This workflow always starts with an online application. Uh, over two thirds of our applicants will apply through the comfort and ease of their phone uh, technology. Uh, and so once you are guiding through that process, you're gonna be asked to upload some documents. These are typically gonna be things that you have on hand. Uh, we even allow screenshots, believe it or not. Uh, we want to make this process as seamless and smooth for you. Um, what are some actual documents? Well, we're gonna start off with your passport or we'll ask you for your government issued photo ID. We'll ask you for any type of documents such as your enrollment or your admission, uh, current or previous transcripts. Uh, we wanna get a better understanding exactly of what you're looking to do. Part of that application process will ask you what's the school you'll be going to to confirm eligibility. Uh, what degree are you going to be pursuing? What is your program start date? When do you want the loan, uh, the loan funds to kick in your loan date? Uh, and a host of other questions that are pretty simpli uh, simplistic, less than 15 minutes on average for most uh, applicants. Uh, and then finally, uh, we have the initial review stage. So this is where, uh, or actually part of the initial review stage is what we just talked about. We're going to actually do a credit check. You're probably asking yourself, well, you just mentioned credit history is not required. How come you're doing a credit check? We only do a credit check to determine if you have any existing debt floating around there, whether in Canada, whether if you're already in the country or back home. Uh, of course, when we look at your forward looking debt to income ratio, which is one of the aspects they'll take into the loan affordability, uh, we just want to make sure that this is going to be OK for you. And of course, there's some other aspects if we see some cases where Students may have some delinquencies and things like that, which, by the way, doesn't necessarily rule you out. Uh, this helps us to make a best decision. We're a responsible lender, and we want to make sure we're doing the right thing for you. Um, moving on, once you check your eligibility, you, uh, you complete your application, excuse me, you check your eligibility, you uploaded your documents, then this will be sent to a team of underwriters. Uh, so one of the underwriters will be looking at this. If all looks good, the student will ideally be presented with an approval. In some cases, you may get a partial approval. And then, of course, the, uh, the you know, unfortunately, it does happen for students who may not get approved. You'll be given a documentation on why. And for anyone that has a, a, a realistic means to be able to correct those things that led to that decline, you'll be able to reapply after 90 days. Uh, finally, as far as after post approval, We'll handle a lot of what we call our school confirmation. We'll confirm your enrollment dates. We'll confirm the disbursement dates. Uh, we'll make sure that we have all the aspect of sending the funds to your school take care of so you can worry about the most important thing. Um, and finally, we'll send out the final loan document to you. Once that's signed, there's a couple of brief moment we call rescission period, your, fund, your legal right to cancel. Uh, and then after that, you're in the clear, the funds get dispersed to the school uh, and we are happy to have played that part with you. So what good would me speaking about Empower if there wasn't any sort of proof of, of, of concept? You know, what, what have we done over the years? Uh, we've awarded it, you know, I, I won't even, you know, sort of read them out here, just allow you to glance here. Uh, we always recommend for students to check us out, ask other people that they may have known. A lot of times these are student referrals. Um, and we just honestly want to show you that we're happy to play this role with you. And we are honored to have been voted uh, the one, uh, number one student loan option for international students in 2022. This has actually been a couple of years running in a row. Uh, and so we're thankful that uh, we can just help you get one step closer to your academic goal. So I want to cover sort of the Empower's unique aspect, uh, why we feel we're better, easier, and cheaper. Of course, starting with the uh, so the unique value that we offer is that uh, there's no collateral requirement, no kusaner. Uh, sort of fun fact, we get asked by students and sometimes their family members, what if we provide some type of collateral, some type of cosigner? Will that help their likelihood of, of getting approved? Because, of course, everyone wants to get approved um, and we wouldn't, even uh, we wouldn't even accept it. I want to be fair across the board. Uh, there's no restrictions on any of your school expenses. Uh, we offer a number of additional uh, and no cost type of services or resources more so, uh, resume review, career services help, 
uh, they'll actually help you out. These are career professionals, part of our HR staff as well. Uh, we offer flexible payment terms for those that will need them. And more importantly, I can't stress enough, you're helping to build your credit profile. So um, just a couple of things to keep in mind. As far as why we feel empowers easier, uh, quick eligibility check. We have this 3033 we would always harp on, uh, but it's a quick check, online application, every, all the documents are digital. There's no hassle having to go here, go there. Um, the documents that we do require are, for the most part, simplistic. They're not too numerous. And then the very application process itself, for anyone who's maybe visited us in the past or anyone who may be, have visited our website recently, I may mean, have not known this, but we've completely revamped our website. Uh, we've completely done a lot of things on the back end to allow for quicker real-time approvals uh, and to really streamline this. So uh, please check us out. We would be happy for you to stop by. Why we believe that Empower is cheaper? Uh, of course, we'll have to mention our interest rates. We offer competitive interest rates for students. This will vary on whether you are an undergraduate versus an, a graduate, whether you're international versus a, a domestic student. Um, you know, we have no uh, sort of any of these associated fees that uh, you'll see up front. The one fee that we do have is a origination fee. Uh, this is 5% of the, lo the funded loan amount. This is standard when it comes to financiers when it comes to actually uh, lending and dispersing your uh, loan itself. As far as the, the loan currency, it's not the, affected by currency depreciation. And that will be sort of a segue into our next uh, screen here. Completely understand everyone uh, is different from the next person. You know, what one person may appreciate a fixed interest rate versus a variable. At the end of the day, we offer a ton of financial literacy tools on our website. Uh, we encourage you all to do your due diligence to find what works best for you. And of course, uh, we'll provide you the most comfortable experience while you're in school, while you're making these payments. Um, and so if we happen to be the one or that option that uh, fits your scenario best, um, we'll, let's, you know, we'll, let's be honored to let's see how it goes. I joke around sometimes when I happen to present and I say, I know these look like these are not stock photos and they're not. Uh, these are students who took the time to write to us. And these are just three of the hundred, you know, I, honestly, at this point, we've helped thousands of students over the years since 2014. So uh, you can read some of these on various platforms, uh, trust pilots, you name it. Uh, and we just want to be uh, thankful to you all because we're not doing anything, honestly. We're helping you just go through this process. Uh, it's you all that have actually taken the time, committed yourself, have achieved the high uh, expectations of your academic performances and beyond. Um, so uh, we're really honored uh, be, being able to work with you. So I want to kind of touch on a couple of these things. Some of these we have already kind of mentioned, um, so no need to sort of uh, re-mention those. But for students that are going through their visa process, we have them reach out from time to time, time uh, from time to time, excuse me, and they'll want some type of proof of funding. Uh, we'll provide some documentation for that, so that will be helpful throughout that journey. Uh, of course, we have our career uh, credit building, and I'll kind of gloss through those other options. As far as the job interview training, that is part of the path to success uh, resources that I am mentioning. Please check out our website as well for that. And I think one thing that probably doesn't get mentioned enough is our assimilation support. Some folks that you may hear from Empower talk about, if you do, they'll call it networking support, but essentially we understand the journey of an international student and we understand how it will feel uh, for individuals coming from a different country uh, that maybe wanna connect with other folks uh, from their home country. Uh, more, more, uh, more commonly, we see students wanting to connect with other individuals uh, from the same university, right? Hey, have you ever supported a student? Absolutely, we have many times. You know, would you like to connect with them? We'll connect with the student, ask them for their go ahead. Uh, and if all if they're saying yes, we will connect the two parties together. So just a number of additional resources. Again, this is at no charge. Uh, we would like to consider ourselves more than a lender. Um, we do see this aspect of working with each and every one of you um, as an investment. 
Uh, many of the students, in fact, will end up going on back home or even within this uh, within Canada and making a huge impact in various industries. So um, we just want to let you know what's available for you. As far as our scholarships, um, we have our two flagship Global Citizen Scholarship. Uh, we have our Women in STEM are is one that is super powerful, uh, super popular as well. Uh, Empower MBA scholarship, which is a little bit on the newer side. And then we have, uh, I would probably say our most popular, believe it or not, is our monthly scholarships. Um, again, quick uh, process, double check your eligibility on our website. I would like to think that everyone for the most part that is listening to this or would visit our site will be able to apply for this. As far as the format is concerned, this is going to be a short essay uh, sometimes we would ask questions like, uh, you know, what are you most grateful for? Or we have various things of the month. And so it's a great time to simply reflect and introspect uh, and possibly be uh, awarded a certain amount of funds um, while you continue uh, on your journey. So uh, please check that out as well. And of course, as we mentioned on the top, we have many more to come in uh, 2023. So pretty straightforward presentation. Um, as far as how anyone can contact us, we have a couple of ways, um, starting with our empower.me at empowerfinancing.com. Uh, that's our standard email handle. Uh, one thing to note, if you have either, if you've already applied and you're in the application process, or you are about to, or just curious how it works, each applicant will be assigned to a relationship manager and that one person will then be the one that will communicate with you. So as you're uploading documents on the back end, they'll get notified. This particular student's uh, document it can't cannot be accepted, uh, or they're needing to provide more clarity on the, the funds that they wish to state. Um, and they'll reach out to you. Uh, in cases, if you want to reach out to us, we have a phone line you'll see on our website. You can even have that RM set up a phone call with you. Um, and we look forward to seeing everyone that we can. Um, other than that, thank you. I think I like to personally not gloss over the information and rather use the majority of the time for questions, other insights that come to mind. So um, with, that being, uh, with that being said, I'll stop sharing um, and we'll kind of take some time to, to look forward here. Okay, so absolutely, you know, thank you, Arba. So yes, just to kind of verbally, if anyone does not see this pinned, uh, this question here, um, if you're interested in reaching us by phone, we have our number at plus one area code 202-417-3800. Uh, for if you're in, located in Canada, I'll be, of course, plus one, six, four, seven, uh, 503 um, As far as the, the timeline or the hours of operation, we like to open the phone lines between 8.30 to 4.30 uh, Eastern time zone. Uh, so definitely do reach out to us uh, around those times. So moving on, um, if an international student got financial aid, uh, does she need to pay back the loan at Empower Finance? So these questions seem to be jumping. Um, let me see here. So the question I'm seeing is if an international student has financial aid, do they need to, does she need to pay back the loan at Empire Financing? If you do, if you have, I, 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 I probably need some more clarity on that, uh, but I'm just, just to assume here, if you're taking out, a, just to kind of simplify it, if you're taking out a loan from Empower, the moment it gets dispersed, you still have up to 30 days, but if you know if something changes and you're getting additional funding, you can you can revert those back. But anything outside of that, you'll you'll you will need to, to pay back those loans. But of course, part of that initial um, sort of initial eligibility process as you're going through, make sure you take your time to uh, to really assess your funds whether you should take out the funding or not. Um, but thank you, uh, Connie. Uh, moving on. So that's a great question, Vera. Uh, so 
we they're considering, you know, Vera's question was centered around um, some of the other college or Canadian colleges that we don't have. If you visit our website uh, currently at this moment, uh, we are working with the 23 universities and they're not, to, uh, not counting their associated business schools. Um, but we're always looking to add new schools, uh, Vera. I can say that this is constant discussion. Um, so currently, Centennial College, that's one I personally had many students ask me about. I do hope that we can make that eligible. But in the meantime, you know, if there are any others that uh, you see that might be a good fit, I would say reach out to us and maybe ask for me by name, Malaku. Uh, maybe I can keep you on hand and, and you and I can talk if there's any movement there. Uh, I can, Bola, I, I might not be able to say everyone's name and I might have the time to read everyone's name or everyone's questions, but I'll try to kind of go on the major points I want to discuss. But uh, for anyone, you know, we do have that empower.me at Empower Financing, just to kind of get some more clarity on some of the questions in here. Uh, but for I can, Bola, please, I need financial assistance. Absolutely, check us out. Uh, this seems, if what I cover seems at least interested to you, um, you know, the next, you know, the step would be to check us out, go through the process. Everyone must go through that process because every student's uh, profile is unique. Um, and we hope that we can be a part of this. So one one thing I will know, because I, I, I have, you know, because maybe anyone who joined in after a certain part of the session, if you, the first sort of key point would be to identify, you know, the, the school of interest for you. So we always refer to our website, you know, getting that out the way, making sure if you don't see your school listed there and right, and we're not talking about, if you visit our website, let's, I'll give you an example. Um, you'll have McMaster University, which is an eligible school. Please note this does not uh, denote any type of partnership at all with any of these schools. These are simply schools we've made eligible from our end and students can apply. But with that being said, McMaster University is a school that students can apply for. And McMaster has the DeGroote School of Business. So you won't see DeGroote, you won't see Rotman, but you'll see University of Toronto. Uh, and so uh, what I would say is if you don't see the actual university there, um, it's not eligible. And realistically, this is not something that we will be able to change in the real time. There's a lot of things that go into making the school eligible. So rather than have the students set up for uh, let down at a future point, we just want to say if you if you don't see a university there, uh, please look at another university. And we hope that one of those other universities uh, meets your standards and fits your uh, your goals. And I thank everyone for their question so far. So Daniel brings up a good point. Uh, can Is there any way that we can assist with the visa process if we have already applied? So how we, so, so a couple things. Um, if you're a current, and this is just me speaking here, you know, we, of course, we offer our documentation our loan offers what you'll be able to provide typically from the visa process. Students are asking us about proof of funds. Um, and that's what we'll provide. In other cases, uh, you know, we do have immigration support uh, staff on hand. But one thing that a lot of the schools I've talked to and a lot of the schools that mentioned is that if you've been accepted to a program or you're a current student, you know, um, many of these universities have resources as well. Uh, of course, if that's outside of the financial documentation that we will provide you. But if that's what we're looking at, absolutely, we do provide you with that. So I have another question. Oh, I have a question, excuse me, from Rebecca. Um, I may have not heard, but do, do you have scholarships and loans accommodate your accommodation if you don't live on campus? So the skull, okay, so the, so the answer is no. And, and and that's at this point in time, November 23rd, 2022. Um, we are able to provide funding to cover 100, up to uh, ideally, hopefully 100%. I think $125,000 will cover some of the more highest ends of MBAs out there. So I would like to think we can cover your full cost of tuition with our, uh, with our higher loan amounts, uh, but it will cover just school costs. Um, and so that, that will be that. But... Um, we have some other questions here. So, 
Okay, this is a question, maybe a one or two part question from Ruth. Um, so yeah, so a couple of things we note here for anyone that joined after part of our eligibility criteria will require that students will be within two years from graduating. So let's say you're an undergrad, of course, this will be year three, year four. Um, and of course, most graduate programs are going to fall in a two year time frame as well. Um, so the one thing you noted, the school itself is not eligible. And then of course, you're being a bachelor, Ruth, if you're being studying for your undergrad here, um, you would as long as you fit within that criteria, but I would say in your case, you know, it's, I'm not one to tell you, you know, pick another school that's eligible just for the sake of doing that. You know, I want you to obviously attend the school year that you wish, but, um, you know, if there's not, if, if at the end of the day, if, if it may make more sense to revisit our list of schools that we have on our website, uh, please do so. Um, I would like to think out of, you know, the 23 universities and not to mention their associated business schools, um, there are a lot of programs that should fit. Um, and maybe I'm biased here, right? Um, but I would like to think that's the case. Yeah, yep. And, and and some of these points, in case anyone's not seen the Q&A, our boss is doing is really like addressing some of these things that may come to mind. Um, we have students to ask us about the two-year eligibility in a way where they'll say, all right, so I have a four-year PhD program and I can apply for my financing ahead of time for my last two years. You know, uh, the thing is the moment in order for you to access funding, you'll have to be eligible from the moment that you apply. So uh, once you are within two years, then you'll be able to reach out to us. And I'll kind of, while some more questions come in, I'll, I'll kind of take a step back and kind of let any more questions come in. But I think as far as other best practices that we wanted uh, to talk about, and I'll, I'll use this time until we just kind of see no more questions coming in and maybe it'll be time to go then. But uh, ideally from timeline perspective, we encourage students to apply as early in their, their specific journey as, uh, as possible. Uh, the reason being is while we've done many great strides and helping to streamline our website and very, you know, streamline the documents, there's an administrative aspect too. There's a back and forth that students will have, you know, uploading their documents, having their relationship manager review them. Uh, there's the review process. In some cases, students who go into the review may need to provide additional documentation because we try to work, our underwriters are awesome. They'll try to really work with you, uh, really, uh, you know, try their best to 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 fit their underwriting risk uh, criteria, assuming it won't be a risk. Um, so, get all your documentation. Visit our website. Uh, you know, we have a, a, a required document checklist. We have a financial plan template that students will be able to use to really work their numbers on how much they need for a given term. Um, and then, more importantly, uh, we'll be following up you know reach out to us if you have questions if something's not making sense you're unsure before you kind of proceed you know be proactive um and then finally other than that that should be a good best practice for anyone who comes to our doors so if i'm trying my best as i take my finger off the clicker, a question will come in. So we're dancing here. But uh, let's mark it down. So Mohammed, uh, you asked me, I appreciate your question. Um, and great to meet you all, honestly. And um, so yeah, if you have just in case you may not have heard me or read Arbaz's answer in the chat, um, you know, essentially our criteria, we can support, as uh, simply put, if a student will be applying for a university uh, that is approved, not approved, but our supported school list, uh, and they're within two years from graduating, that is the first sort of check mark that you can check off your list as far as eligibility is concerned. Um, there's some other, as you work through the process, obviously we can't cover everyone's unique situations. We all encourage 
you know, the first step is to understand looking our loan product. And this is more of a scenic route answer, but it, it, it really is one to take into consideration. Um, there's a lot of questions that can uh, that can that you could formulate in your head. The best thing to understand is um, figuring out the program you want to attend. Is it eligible? Is it supported? OK, great. What's my basic eligibility? Um, well, I'm within two years. This is a supported school. I'm pursuing a degree program. And um, so that means you'll step into the next phase. You'll have to put an application. Our team is going to have to look through because there's a lot of other factors that may or may not impact you. For example, we support virtually every country in the world. That's what, 195 uh, plus or roughly around that number. So um, but there are a few that we cannot support uh, due to uh, restrictions that we are held to uh, due to sanctions uh, that any other lender or just part of many different um, OFAC restrictions, as they call them, we want to be able to work with. And so you may meet, think you have all the, I'm within two years, is an eligible program, but that one aspect can be the one that unfortunately will restrict us. So um, we ask you to just go through the application processes real quick. We'll go through a quick initial review that usually clears up in about a day or two, and um, and you'll know for certain. Uh, we have an anonymous question here. If my graduate program is within a year, do I qualify for funding for Empower? Absolutely. As long you don't have to be two years, you you can be a year. We have students that apply for funding to, uh, you know, to cover the last semester. And, you know, just like literally, our one of our founders he ran out of funds uh, towards the tail end, and so we, it it you know, it, it may, maybe you didn't, maybe you just would rather go through this route. But yeah, if within two two years or less, you are. You are, uh, that is one of the eligibility uh, clearances there. Do you know why the visa process is taking so long? This is Daniel uh, for international students. I honestly would, uh, that's a question, believe it or not, many schools, many uh, individuals involved are asking, but I I'm not the one for that, to be quite transparent with you. There's a number of reasons, some of the feedback I've heard from students and other individuals, but um, you know, we're, we're all, you know, from our perspective, from Empower and, and what we're, you know, kind of focused on, we're just, we're, all, we're able to do support the students as they come through. So um, that's one thing I, I'm unsure, but I will say, I wouldn't let that deter you, you know, because while we ask that question, there are, there's literally thousands of students getting approved, coming, you know, from, they're getting approved into Canada for their visas coming from various countries. So, um, you know, just one thing to keep in mind. And that's with anything, believe it or not. You guys have done the hard work, um, you know, overall, you know, being the students that you are, reaching out, doing your due diligence, finding a, a, a viable path forward for yourself. So, um, you know, assume the best. Obviously, life may not always work that way, but um, at least it wouldn't hurt to think that way. Thank you, Arbaz. Uh, please, guys, take a look uh, through the chat. We have our document checklist for your uh, for your international graduate students. Please check that out. Um, sort of get you head started on this process. Uh, we have an interest. We have a, you know this might be the first time I've seen this question. Tolu uh, Walasi. I hope I said that correctly. Uh, is there a way to use a scholarship award one as a way to repay part of the loan? Uh, I will say no. I've never seen that. Um, don't quote me on that. Arbaz, jump in if you've heard that before. But uh, the fact that I've never seen this, I, I'll say no. But, um, you know, you can reach out to us on our team. For some reason, if there's been any change that we are not aware of. But I, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't, um, this, the very sort of, I won't even get into the whole compliance thing, but the way these funds are grants or a scholarship, there are things that will constitute it as a grant. So, you know, allowing those funds to repay a loan, well, I'm sure of it will will it will, will not be possible. So, but hey, you you know that money if you win apply for a scholarship and you have that, that's uh, um, you know the you know if you're using those funds out of pocket, I'm sure you will be able to to use something otherwise to account for it. I'm hoping. And as a quick recap, just here, to, as we kind of hit the tail end, um, quick.
quick eligibility reminder for anyone, undergraduate or graduate student within two years of graduating. Uh, so we're about to begin a one year, two year program. Uh, you're, we support international students, we support DACA recipients, uh, we support US citizens, refugees, asylum seekers. Uh, this is, you'll be at, you know, obviously we're at a Canadian college and university fair, um, but uh, it would be remiss to not mention uh, we support 400 plus universities uh, across the United States and Canada. And so that's uh, a little bit about us, but um, I'll probably give it maybe about a minute or two. Um, as a friendly reminder, empower, M-P-O-W-E-R dot me at empowerfinancing.com is an email. You can reach out to us. We have our phone line. You can check all this website. Our boss has linked every critical piece of information that you may be interested in. Um, you, you know, you, you're, uh, I'm glad that this information was helpful, uh, Nisa. Um, and I and fingers crossed for you. And honestly, no luck needed. I, I'm wishing you a, a, a successful admittance into Queens University. Um, you know, that's also an approved school for us. So we hope to see you uh, later on down the road. Don't feel, you know, if you make it through the process, feel free to reach out. You can ask and say, hey, I was during the webinar and we can get connected. Uh, will your organization consider extending to universities in the UK? So that is something that similar to the other uh, uh, Centennial College or Conestoga College, or just in general college uh, schools that we wish to add, uh, there we've been requested by so many students and I'm sure that is up for a discussion and it has been a discussion. I've seen those discussions. Um, I, it just, it wouldn't mean anything, unfortunately to you guys now because it's all it is is just a promise, you know, or a, a, not even a promise. It's just like possible as a possibility. So we don't want to have students waiting um, I've seen some students wait, like, well, I'll wait a year. And then they wait a year and they'll find out that that particular school has not been added. Um, and we don't want to waste anyone's time. I do know as far as Europe as a whole, we do have one eligible school in uh, just overseas. Um, that's INSEAD. It's actually uh, the school that our uh, founders or co-founders were uh, had went through. But no, we, we don't have anything in the UK for now. So there's, I want to talk on this question here. Um, it's, give me a second there. This is actually a good question. I won't even need to find it. I, I, I read it here. So, um, there was a student, please feel free to call me out here, but there was a question related to students from Ghana getting declined. Can you give me some, maybe I, unless I can't, because I can't seem to find it now, but can you tell me like what you got declined for? Or was this a decline from Empower? Was this a decline from, you know, what process? I'm hoping I can find it here and I'll take my time. Feel free to shoot the question. I'm sorry, it's it's moving. It, this 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 what I see on my end is moving. So, um, but as far as a country of eligibility from an empower perspective, absolutely we support we su work with. Gan students from Ghana are one of the most largest group bases that we work with. You know, we work with students from all over the world. We see a lot of students coming from India. We see a lot of students from China. We see a lot of students. Let's say Ghana, for example, not just Ghana. Western Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa, you name it, Ethiopia. Um, you know, we have 195 countries at the end of the day. So, um, you know, and these schools that we are able to fund your education for, um, uh, you know, unless there's something new, I don't see why there should be a process, but I, I would assume that's not what you were referring to. So if you can either share the question or email me for more confirmation, I just want to make sure we're making sure we're you're not being turned away for some reason when you should not be. Okay. Well, this has been a great session. I would hope. Uh, thank you. Um,
please, for anyone who missed it or for just has hasn't had a chance to do so, please quick take a quick look through the uh, the Q and A uh, side chat. There's a lot of highly inform informative links that our boss has shared. Again, check out our website empowerfinancing.com. Um, thank you. Um, unless I'll kind of ask my colleague. Uh, our boss, if we want to, if we want to keep this going for a couple minutes, but uh, but um, okay, yeah. So I'm not seeing any new questions. So thank you to everyone. Um, thank you, Priya, uh, for the support and uh, for everyone here at the team. Um, we're honored to speak to you all. We wish you all the journey, uh, the best of your journeys as you move forward. Whether you work with Empower or not, uh, we're honored and uh, wish you all the best. So thank you. Actually, here we have the uh, 